In recent days, there was a statement made by former Harvey Weinstein personal assistant and showrunner to the upcoming Disney Star Wars show, The Acolyte, where she was basically calling out certain fans within Star Wars, where she was saying, if you're just an ister phobe or something like that, then you're not a real fan of Star Wars. And naturally, you're getting a lot of shills for Star Wars and people within the access media just kind of go on slay queen when she says this. And I want to take a look at what she had to say, because on the surface, it doesn't seem objectionable. But when you really dive into it, it's pretty obvious what she's trying to do and the type of fan base that Disney is trying to cultivate for Star Wars. As a fan myself, I know how frustrating some Star Wars storytelling in the past has been. I felt it myself, she said. I stand by my empathy for Star Wars fans, but I want to be clear. Anyone who engages in bigotry, racism, or hate speech, I don't consider a fan. Mind you, she doesn't actually say what it means to be a bigot or racist, so it could be anything, even if you're just criticizing a show that has people of various groups and orientations in it, which I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing for this type of thing, because... Leslie Headland has made it no secret that she's trying to make it a diverse show with various races, sexes, orientations, and all that stuff. So that suggests, though, to at least to me, that she's just kind of priming an excuse. So when people inevitably criticize this show, which there's always going to be some type of criticism, but it looks like she's trying to use these various groups as a sort of human shield. So when people do criticize her show for other reasons, that even if it's legitimate reasons, she's just going to say like, well, they're not real Star Wars fans. so. You don't even have to listen to them. Everyone who actually loves this show is a real Star Wars fan and actual fans of Star Wars love this show. At least I'm thinking that's what's going to happen in the near future. Already you're kind of getting that same response and people kind of point out uh, in her defense though, but they're basically saying like what they did in the past. This is the, pretty much Disney's playbook at this point when it comes to Star Wars. You'd think saying, hey, if you're a racist or sexist, you aren't a fan of Star Wars in my eyes. Wouldn't it be a controversial statement? And yet the replies to this are horrid. One reply said, ironically, this is a bigoted racist hate speech against fans. Well, yeah, that's pretty much true. Make that make sense. You can't. <laughs> okay, whatever. The reality is people just want to hate and scream when they're not watching a story with a white street man at the center of it. <laughs> Yes, that's really, I, I could go into many examples where there's a lot of these so-called fans that they had probably call racist, sexist, bigoted, or whatever, who would point out the stories that they liked that involved black characters or female characters or things like that, or even ones with gay characters in it. The fact of the matter is people don't care about those type of things. Even these people that they try to hold up as being particular examples of bigots and races, these people just want good storytelling, or at least I'm just going to speak for myself. I want good storytelling. I don't care if it's a straight person as the lead or if it's a gay black person or anything like that. I just want a good story. And if it's a bad story, I'm going to say it. But apparently when it comes to a lot of the stuff, Disney star Wars related, if they have some underrepresented group or a person from a group that they perceive as being underrepresented, well then if you criticize it, then you're just getting labeled as an Ister phobe or something like that because they don't want star Wars fans who actually care about star Wars. They want star Wars fan who will just, mindlessly consume the product and praise them for whatever they do even if it's actually very lazy and we know this because of the fact of the matter that they're even going so far as to try to hire people who aren't actually fans of star wars we got this article that came out several months ago that was saying that they deliberately hired people for writing it who didn't even see star wars which to me that's just mind-boggling a writer in hollywood who's never actually watched star wars but apparently that's the type of people that they're going for behind the scenes but now we got these interviews coming out from the cast members and it was pointed out where apparently even the actors don't even know anything about Star Wars. We got this clip right here that's been kind of going around and just take a look at it for a second. Well, Anakin just killed a whole Death Star. How many people died on that? Well, Anakin just killed... Okay, I'm going to stop it here because some people might be looking at that and be like, well, what's the problem? Yeah, Anakin killed the Death Star. No, it was Luke who destroyed the Death Star. Anakin didn't do it here. I'll rewind it just in case you didn't catch that. Well, Anakin just killed a whole Death Star. How many people died on that? And you might be defending this by saying like, well, he was just in an interview. He's saying it kind of off the cuff. Uh, I mean, it's kind of weird that he never caught himself or the interviewers never caught him. The other actors with him never pointed out that he misspoke or whatever, because that, yeah, that's understandable. You can misspeak, but he kind of says the same thing again. Uh, just take a look. This was also pointed out from uh, nerd rock that was also shared. I, I did get in trouble for this answer at Star <laughs> Wars Con. Heat. I got I got heat. Yeah. And in my mind, it's so funny to me because it literally, as a person who's outside and just a fan coming in, that was what was so beautiful and interesting to me. You know, 
people have been talking to me online about how Darth Vader is such a bad person. It's very clear and it's very well established from those actions. But if you can't look and see that Anakin blowing up the Death Star possibly killed millions and millions of people, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this oh. right now. Um, yeah, you should just shut up. So unless he keeps misspeaking in different interviews about the same subject, it seems like he doesn't actually know anything about Star Wars. And I guess some people will just defend it. It's like, well, he's an actor. He doesn't have to know about it. He's not a fan of Star Wars. Like, uh, okay, whatever. Because this other one just also says it. Because he doesn't know anything about Star Wars. He's talking about the prequel trilogy here. And the films that I was seeing, it was, they were, they were basically trying to better than could be. He's trying to say like what they're doing in the acolyte is something that hasn't been done before saying, uh, they were, they were the the, utmost and could do nothing more complicated or whatever. The Jedi aren't just being shown as perfect beings. uh, They're being shown as like flawed characters. Like, yes, that's the whole point of the prequels. Uh, not only was the Jedi Order were there problems with that, but and it was all about Anakin's fall to the dark side. So I don't, I don't really do get what he's are, getting at here, unless he really just hasn't seen any of the, the movies. Are, but it's like I was saying though, this is pretty much the fan base that Disney is trying to cultivate when it comes to Star Wars because they understand through their terrible movies in the past that they've alienated pretty much the hardcore Star Wars fan base and. I think at some point they were trying to win them back. And that was the rise of Skywalker or the efforts with that to try to appease old fans. I think they even tried to do that with Obi-Wan. That was a colossal failure. That's why it's not getting a second season. And I think they're kind of basically rebuild the fan base. They spent billions of dollars on this franchise, presumably because it has a built-in fan base and you want to attract that audience, but they've chased them away. So now they're trying to just be like, well, yeah, we didn't want those fans anyway, which is a total cope on their part. But they're trying to say, we didn't want those fans. These are the real fans that we want. And it's basically people who don't even know Star Wars. And as we've seen from a lot of the viewership on their Star Wars shows, it's people who don't even actually watch Star Wars. They just want to applaud them for actually just putting in various groups and other check boxes into their show. And then they're just going to kind of pass it up. And that's why I'm thinking this show is probably going to be another colossal failure, which is why they're getting these excuses ready. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. I mean, whether people actually agree with them or not, no one's watching their show. It's going to lose money. And there's only so long that Disney can sustain this before they understand like, okay, we need to actually just either cut costs dramatically because this show was ridiculously expensive or they try to actually win back the old fan base, which I think there's going to be a tall order for something like that. You pretty much have to get rid of a lot of the executives over at Lucasfilm, including Kathleen Kennedy in order for people to come back, which I'm not going to hold my breath on that, but let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Do you think this is the new breed of Star Wars fans, people who don't actually like Star Wars, or do you think they're actually trying to appeal to some of the older Star Wars fans? Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button, click the like button and share the video because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.